Hello, hello, Facebook. Hope you look crooked there. Let's see if I can fix you. All right. So, for those of you watching the replay, you know the drill. Join us for a little dance party here while I get this shared out into the world. Let me get some music. I love calling in my gratitude with my boy Aggie. So I can get some more people in here. Who else can we get in here? Let's text people. Even if you're watching the replay. And I also invite you to gather any of your sacred objects. Whatever you need. Let's do this. tag so many people guys so make sure you tag a friend we're gonna actually be so grateful we're gonna listen to the song twice while i get this out there i feel like you guys will love it with me and again this is your chance to go out and get any of your sacred objects we're gonna be talking about tools and things that we love what kind of tools do you all like to use in your life I like to make sure that anybody that wants to be invited can be. If I miss you on this tag list, I am sorry. Again, I can only tag so many people before you guys get bored waiting on me. But I'm doing my best. Stay true. Stay true. Thank you. Thank you.
think I can see you guys' comments. I think I got it shared. It's not gonna dance. Bring them in, bring them in. I see you all popping up. Keep inviting friends. They are welcome to join. tonight. How are you doing tonight on this fine night of day two of Divine Intention Ceremony? Now tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about tools and techniques and how I use them. So I am going to move you guys around here in just a moment. And this is a broad topic. So I'm only going to be able to touch on a few things tonight. So while I do so, I invite you to gather some of your favorite sacred objects and if you haven't already done so, and create some sacred space. Create some space around you with all of your favorite sacred things, a book, a crystal, whatever. And I also want tonight to be interactive for the most part. For those watching live, I'm asking you to please feel free to drop questions in the comments because when tools come into play, everybody's so different. And I wanna make sure I'm sharing information that is helpful to you guys. The reason I'm holding this Divine Intention Ceremony is so I can also show you how I practice my spiritual offerings, how I collect my items, how I treat my items, and how to just hold a ceremony. So many people are like, how do I celebrate myself? How do I do a ceremony? How do I sage? How do I do all of these things? So drop me questions, concerns, whatever comes up for you. Maybe you want to know about a specific crystal for anxiety or sleep or something. Let me know what you want to know more about and what kind of vibes you need in your life so that I can know what to share and what tools are of most interest to you. So at the end, I'll be doing a collective card reading or maybe in the middle, we'll see. And I'll be sharing how I use my cards a little bit. Um, oh, and if you can grab a piece of paper that you don't mind ripping in half, um, maybe a pen, a marker, something to write with, we'll be doing a little activity, totally optional. You can also do it in your mind. All right, all right, so let's see here, grab a few things, get comfortable, and where to begin? I guess while I let you all grab your items and get your things together, I'm gonna show a little bit of my altar space. Um, so let me see, I'm, let's see if I can take you guys on a little journey here. Bloop, bloop, bloop. All right, so this is one of my little altars. I got lots of crystals. This is my selenite ball. Got some salt lamps. Sometimes I don't light them. I just have them here. See, we found these antlers on a mystical trip into the woods. Some of my crystals and little spheres. We have some wands that a friend gave me. Here I have a little elemental grid. My candles went out, but I'll have other candles I'll light. So this is a crystal for the water. Or this is air, water, fire, and earth. And then this is my activation crystal. You can see here, I have a little paper there that is something I'm manifesting, some selenite, some earth flowers I grew, and just some other sacred objects. I have little sacred objects all over my space here. Here's another altar I have with all different kinds of crystal grids. So I've been collecting many a tool for a while. I also kind of want to show off this painting. Because painting is one of my tools. It's how I meditated before I knew what meditation was. And I love just creating art that takes me to a different place. So this is a heavenscape I created. 
And painting is very much a tool as well. It's how I, I learned to do things um, before meditating happened. I would get my messages that way. And you can see I have a little, don't mind my light, but I have little altar spaces to like, I mean, I have Archangel Michael, I got my zodiac energies and my goddess energy and Mary Magdalene. And I just wanted to show you guys, like, create a sacred space for yourself. What does your sacred space look like? Now, let's see if I can get you guys comfortable here again. Give me one moment. Sorry if I'm moving you all around. Look away if it bothers you. And, you know, leave me something in the comments. Pay attention to the comments for a second. Boop, boop, boop. All right. Let's see if I can do this without making you guys dizzy. Give me just a second. We're getting you there. Thanks for being here. I just wanted to show you all what that looked like for me. All right. Here we go. Getting more comfy. Sorry for moving you guys all around. Let's see if I can get comfortable again here. Just wanted to show off some of my pretty things. Now you're not as centered as I usually like you, but that's all right. So, what are some of your sacred spaces like? What are some of your sacred tools? Do you display them? Do you keep them? I have little treasure chests that I keep things in sometimes. And, you know, it, it's important to have all these different little items because they mean something to me. Maybe it's not important to you. Maybe you don't like to have as much stuff, and that's okay. I'm actually going to take you through a practice here in a little bit where you can connect with your sacred mental space, your inner temple, so that you can keep sacred objects there that you don't have to hold on to here in the physical. So that being said, yesterday we talked about a, a lot of different ways of calling in the elements. So I like to call in the elements. If you have a little candle, light your candle. This is my intention candle for yesterday. Those of you that didn't get to join us yesterday, you can still catch the replay. So I'm going to light my little candle here. Mm. Calling in my fire element to me. And when I can't have fire, I like to include other forms of light. That's why I got little lights all over my room. So I got my candle here. I got lots of little nature bits around me. Let's see, what else do I have here? When possible, I like to light some sort of incense for my air element. So white sage is the, the most common smudging tool. Uh, I've been trying to use less of it specifically for a few reasons. Um, one, there's been massive fires in California where a lot of the crops are grown. And it's also been sort of frowned upon by indigenous tribes these days. And we want to respect other people's practices to the best of our ability. So I did some research in my heritage, um, people of my ancestry used a lot of mugwort. So I have mugwort here. Um, I also grew some of my own garden sage that I'm going to bundle up. People use lavender and rose. There's all kinds of herbs you can use. I want you to feel into your heart and figure out what you need. What kind of herbs do you need? So I'm going to light a little bit of this for my air element. Calling in my air element. And for those of you that have never saged or smudged or whatever before, you don't have to use the whole bundle. In fact, please don't use the whole bundle. Um, just get it going here on the end. Blow a little bit of it out. I have a nice little shell here. It's an abalone shell. I like to use to catch the ashes. So again, those of you that are just tuning in, we're going to talk about some tools. So I'm going to take some time here and show you how I set up the space. I got my altar going. I got my sage and mugwort going. This is mostly mugwort. I got my candle. And then for water, I have some water that I'll drink. Highly suggest that you get some hydration in. And then I also have this fancy little base that I have some spring water in from my water element. Because, you know, you might as well treat yourself. We collect all these weird little objects, these odds and ends, and then we don't get to honor them the same way. So I would really encourage you to create, or not create, but start using these different objects and items as part of your new ritual, your routine. Let them bring you joy. You know, there's that whole decluttering thing where if you didn't like something, if it didn't give you joy to get rid of it, well, make these items give you joy. 
let them remind you who you are and be something that excites you if, when you see it. So again, if you missed yesterday's thing, no worries. There's replays available. Um, oh, my earth. I do have some earth in here too. So I have some pine cones. I got this cool stick that I got from Michigan. And I got some flowers from my garden behind me. And typically, you know, when I go to get nature, I, I try to use items that feel really right. And remember that the earth needs to be okay with giving up these items. I know that sounds crazy, but sometimes uh, I'll be sure to like leave something in return or I'll do a little meditation in the space to make sure it's okay. Um, like before we left Michigan, I gathered a few of those sticks and I, I did it after I did a little meditation and read on the beach and was like, okay, I feel like I'm supposed to take something with me to remember this moment. That was a little ritual for me. So then I grabbed some sticks. Um, and they've become part of my altar and I'm working on getting a few of them made into some cool things. So try not to take nature unless it feels right. Um, and I think it's important to go over some other tools. Let's go over some other tools, but first hydrate yourself. So let's see here. Some other amazing tools that I use are, Ooh, I use crystals a lot. How many of you are really drawn to crystals? Hands up, hands up, leave me a comment. How many of you love crystals? I feel like I've made so many friends that really love crystals. And you know, they're not everyone's jam. That's okay, but I love them. Uh, they've helped me out a lot through my journey. And I got into them a lot growing up. My aunt gifted me some obsidian. Um, I called in a malachite heart when my grandma was really sick and it became a really important part of my practice and I connect with her through it. And you know, if you have some specific crystal questions, drop them in the comments. In my full length courses, I talk a lot about crystals and how they work and um, which ones I use for what. And in simplest terms, they're made from the earth and the elements and they have an energetic frequency to them that can help activate and attract certain things into our lives. And Honestly, even if it's a placebo effect, that's okay for me because then they become mindfulness tools for me. I connect with the specific collective energies that the collective of humanity has given them throughout the years. They've assigned them these properties um, to help bring more good vibes into my life. I also like to believe in the collective vibration that if the collective gives them this, this power, then our energetic frequency activates them to be a specific tool. Um, now that can work in a lot of different ways, you know, because there's different like old wise tales like um, like don't step on a crack or there's black cats are bad and like, you know, put whatever energy you want into it. But for me, the collective believes in crystals for the most part, not everybody, but my collective does. So I like using crystals. So again, getting into them deeper would take so long. There's so many amazing crystals. If you guys have specific questions, I will check them. Um, Maybe my partner CeeLo can message me specific questions in case I don't see them in the chat. Um, that being said, some honorable mentions. Let's talk about some of my favorite crystals. So I do have some just kind of like laying here for examples. Um, I like to use crystals in many different ways. Sometimes I will carry them. Sometimes I'll lay them about my space where I need them. Sometimes I'll make grids with them as I showed you a minute ago. Um, sometimes I'll carry them in my pocket. I obviously love making jewelry out of them so that I can wear them. So this here, an honorable mention, is obsidian. It's a great protector stone. And this is actually white jade. It's not one I use as much, but this is a balance of yin and yang. So this is protection, and this brings in high vibrations. And some other honorable mentions. So amethyst is one. I love using amethyst. Amethyst is a great intuition crystal really good for the crown and the third eye and it's good for clarity. Um, there's an old wise tale that if you gift somebody that you've loved previously an amethyst they will stay with you again in this life forever. It's a wise tale I heard. Didn't know if it was true but let's just say once upon a time I gifted CeeLo an amethyst and he's been great. He's never left and we're actually celebrating our six year couple anniversary today. So yay. So amethyst, great crystal, can be used for so many cool things. 
let's see what other things we got here. So I see one of you asked about my faves, so I'm gonna share my faves. Some other crystals that are really good. Let's see, actually they're all my favorites, so I'm having a hard time figuring out which one to share. So this is one of Celo's favorites, my partner. This is Tiger's Eye, it's a little Tiger's Eye pyramid. Tiger's Eye is a really good protection stone. I like to put Tiger's Eye above my door. I like to put Tiger's Eye above my door for protection. And I also like to carry Tiger's Eye on me or wear it for protection. It's also a good sacral chakra stone. Confidence, strength. So Tiger's Eye is a good one. Let's see, let's see what else we got here. All right, we got rose quartz. Rose quartz is really good for like love, compassion, self-love, more just unconditional love, super calmy, lovey stone is your rose quartz. Um, jaspers are good for grounding. I don't look like I grabbed any. They're usually in my grid, so I've got lots of jaspers around. And they come in all colors. Jaspers and agates are like my go-to stones. They come in all different shapes, sizes, colors for all different kinds of things. If you don't know what a stone is, it's probably some part of the, the jasper agate family or quartz family in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, let's see what else I got here though. Aventurine, aventurine's for good luck and abundance. I love aventurine. Lapis is really good for intuition, third, vi third eye vibes. Um, I like to use it for communication. This is my little lapis shield here. Citrine is a really good abundant stone, also known as the merchant stone. There's a lot of heat treated citrine out there, which is actually amethyst. When you heat amethyst, it becomes what they call as a heat citrine. Um, natural citrine is a little bit more rare, but just as awesome. Again, obsidian is one of my favorites. I have a big obsidian sphere in one of my other altars because I have altars all over my house. I want anywhere I look to be a sacred space so that I know that my spiritual practice is a part of my daily life. It's not just in this room. It's all over the place for me. It's in my car. It's in my notebook. It's in my kitchen. I have a little altar in my kitchen. So this is obsidian. And my ring is also amethyst. So I got amethyst on my ring. I have a little moonstone, a peach or a dark moonstone heart here. It's good for um, birthing new projects and activation, confidence, clarity, kinds of goodness. Appetite is one of my favorites. It's this brilliant blue communication throat chakra. And then malachite is a really powerful one to me. Um, again, when my grandma was sick, I found out that malachite is supposed to be the healer of the healers. And I was manifesting crystals at that time and I had gifted some um, money to a friend that was selling crystals needed to pay his rent and I said just surprise me um, I feel like whatever you send will be good and after I did that I learned about the malachite and was like okay I hope I get a malachite I hope I get a malachite I hope I get a malachite the day my grandma went into the hospital again I got a package on my way there and I had found out my grandma was getting ready to go into a coma like she was unresponsive and I opened my package of crystals on my way there and in it was a malachite heart and I knew that that heart was so important and my intuition took me to my grandmother to place the malachite heart on her heart and she woke up from being unresponsive so that was a super powerful moment for me and um, I used that malachite throughout my grandmother's healing experience until the day she decided she wanted to transition I knew she was going to transition because I actually dropped the heart and the heart broke. So I had two parts of that malachite heart then and it was just a sign for me and it kind of looked like a little door the way it broke. So I, I left one of them with my grandma and her uh, transition experience and I have the other half in my sacred altar in my other space. So malachite is a super important stone for me and I would love to know for those of you that love crystals. What's your favorite crystal? What's a stone that's most important to you? I feel like we have affinities for certain ones. And for me, I definitely have an affinity for malachite, amethyst, um, obsidian, different things like that. A few other ones. So I don't have a piece of labradorite here. Someone asked, labradorite's good for transformation. It's good for dream work. It's good for the third eye. Um, it's good for a lot of different things, actually. I love labradorite. This sphere 
is actually labradorite. Uh, another one that's really cool is hematite. So it's like a magnet almost. Fun fact, this little hematite is a good leading stone. Silo used it um, once upon a time to find his way back to me in a huge crowd of people across many fields. And I used it again when I was lost in the woods to find my way home. So, you know, crystals can have cool little purposes. Um, again, I just wanted to share a few different ways that I use stones in my daily life. So like I picked it up, it was in my pocket, I was freaking out, I didn't know how to get home. And I just kept like kind of rolling it in my hands and then like pointing it a direction and was like, okay, I feel like I'm supposed to go this way. And eventually it led me to a very magical place that was super powerful for me and then got me home. So lots of little things that crystals could be good for that maybe you didn't know about, maybe you think about, who knows. So I'm excited to see in the, the comments what are some stones that are important to you. Oh, and another honorable mention is selenite. It's like an ultimate aura healer, cleanser, great vibe stone. Love selenite. Love it. So. And then I have a little bracelet around it. This bracelet's actually like turquoise and there's a malachite bead in the middle. So all kinds of things, all kinds of things. All right. So let's see here. See any guys in the comments? Y'all are great. Keep dropping them. Prenite's a great stone. Mm, epidote. Mm. Moonstone. Yes, so many great stones. What are your favorite stones? Drop them in the comments. So if you want to learn more about crystals on a deeper level, hit me up. Uh, let's get you in alignment for a future course. Or we can do a one-on-one -on -one session. Maybe you're like, I do better just learning one-on-one. -on -one. And let's see here. I saw a comment pop up. I, I mentioned Labradorite is good for transformation. Someone asked for Labradorite. So anyway, if you want to learn more about crystals on a deeper level, hit me up. I actually have a certification in crystal therapy for what it's worth these days. Uh, I went all in on learning as much as I could about the crystals and how to use them. There's different grids you can put on your body. There's different um, crystal grids you can make in your space. Um, me and one of my friends is actually working on a crystal course so that she can help host that so that I can do more one-on-one -on -one stuff with people. And yeah, if you want to know more about crystals, definitely hit me up, reach out. I have a couple webinars from past experiences I've done, and I have a whole binder of information from a three-day certification course that I run when absolutely necessary, but it's a little harder to do virtually. However, I will be talking about crystals a lot in my upcoming five-week journey. We'll see what that's about. And if you haven't heard of the book Crystal Prescriptions, by Judy Hall. Uh, I suggest that it's a book you check out. It was a book that helped me get started. So I'm gonna take a little drink here. All right, so maybe it's time to move on to some other things. There's so many other tools out there. Um, some people use musical instruments as part of their tools. Seal and I each have instruments that we have an affinity for that are special to us. So I love my rav drum, which you guys can kind of see over here. That's my little hang drum. It's actually not little. My little one, let's see if I can take you guys on a field trip, is right there. And then I have a crystal singing bowl. And seal has got a singing bowl and a flute. And we both just feel very drawn to different instruments. Sorry, I keep moving you guys. See if I can get you stable. Blue, blue, blue. We can do this. This is a shakier one. All right, so what kind of music inspires you? Um, again, Seal's got special flutes. I also have a xylophone. Uh, I'm working on getting a whole set of crystal singing bowls one day, and he has some chimes here. So we got some little Tibetan chimes. And they all have a different vibration. And, you know, this is part of our spiritual practice. Getting the musical zone is really important for us. It's really important for you to find music that works for you. I used to be in a really dark space. And I used to listen to some dark music that just did not serve my energy frequency in the way I needed it to. 
I, I started listening to more high vibe music and DJing more high vibe music and just surrounding myself with high vibe musicians to the best of my ability and that completely changed my world. Being able to listen to music that was in alignment with the way I wanted to feel rather than listening to sad, frustrated, or angry music all the time. It was so draining. So those of you that are interested in more high vibe music, you can check more high vibe music out at bringme2life.com with the number two. I actually put together a playlist today in honor of this, so you can go check out some high vibe music. Um, and there's just all different kinds of tools. So there's also art. Like I said, I use art. I painted some paintings and things. That's part of my practice. Put these chimes somewhere so I'm not making noise. Um, and then there's more physical tools too, like some people have fans, I had some wands back there, there's books, there's journals, which I hope you brought your journal, because I also hope that you're recording your journey through this. And if not your journal, I suggest maybe using your phone. I meant to tell you guys yesterday, when you do meditations, sometimes it's good to use your phone as a way to reflect and record uh, things that are happening for you. So. If you are, let's say like yesterday we walked through and met our higher self, maybe your higher self tells you something and you want to make sure you remember it. Well, then use your phone as a way to just say it out loud. When I do sessions with people, I record them so that they can reflect on them and listen to them later. So you can do that on your own when you're listening to meditations that are guided and just record that experience and reflect on it later. Especially if you see things in meditation that could be meaningful to you. Time's getting away from me a little bit, so I want to keep going. Um, I know you guys for sure want to know more about oracle cards. Um, I don't use as much traditional tarot, but I use a lot of oracle cards. So I love using a variety of them at once sometimes. Um, I have many different decks for all different things, but one of my favorites is the Psychic Tarot deck. So somebody gifted me this deck over like 10 years or so ago, and it's been super powerful for me. Um, someone once told me that somebody should gift you your first deck, but honestly, I don't know how I feel about that. If you feel drawn to a specific set, then gift them to yourself, because um, if needed, it's a big part of my practice, and I don't want people to miss out on that, and it helped me make sure... I was receiving messages from spirit more clearly. So if you're someone that's like, I don't know if what I'm receiving is right, I would like some confirmation from the universe, oracle cards are a great place to start. You see, I'm a visual learner. I get a lot of my internal messages. Um, they do sometimes come verbally, almost like telepathically in my inner ear, like some energy is talking to me, but a lot of it's also visual. I get a lot of my confirmations visually. And I like to know what I'm receiving is on point. So those of you that are just getting into your intuition, you want to do some um, different kind of divination or soul searching. I use, again, oracle cards. I feel like they're less dark, less heavy. Um, I have angel decks. I have crystal decks. Some people don't like to use them because they feel like they're bad. They've honestly helped me so much, and I connect with the angels through them. I connect with loved ones that have transitioned through them. Do whatever feels right to you. I am not telling you to do something that is not right for you. I want you to do what is right for you. So I actually don't use them as often as I used to for personal soul sessions. I've started trusting my own intuition more and more, but I like to use them for collective vibes. And what we're going to do here tonight is I'm going to do a collective reading for all of you. And what I mean by collective is, again, earlier I mentioned how humanity as a whole can create energy and create functions for things. It can also have a collective pulse, things we're all going through, collective energy. So I want us all to take a nice deep breath as I shuffle here. And I'm going to pull some cards. Pull in some cards. For us. Ooh, these are some good ones. So we had some jumpers. And while I give this reading, again, I would love for all of you that are watching to comment. Drop a comment. Let me know who's out there again. And let me know something that you brought tonight for the ceremony in honor of your sacred objects or just because. And if you don't have anything, what's something you wish you had that you could bring with you? Drop a comment below. Let me know who's out there. So. While I do this reading, I'm also going to give a little explanation of how I read the cards so you get an idea. 
Uh, I really like cards that again have imagery on them that I can see messages in. So, the first card that I received here is the Intuition card. Okay, I pulled them out of order there for a second. So, the Intuition card. It's a great card for tonight, right? Because we're learning how to use our intuition more deeply. We're learning how to understand spiritual messages. And in this card, I see clouds, which shows that some of you want to connect with more heavenly spaces. Some of you want to connect more with loved ones or heaven or God in a different way. Um, I see this big door here, which I think is pretty powerful because yesterday, for those of you that joined yesterday's live feed, we did a meditation through the Akashic Records and we were led to a door that we opened to go into our sacred space. So this is our sacred door here and this is a version of our highest self. So this is us looking into kind of that reflection of a mirror. So this is a, a lot of the, the vibrations I've, I'm feeling from yesterday's uh, ceremony pulling into today, showing us that it's important to follow our intuition. Now, typically I pull three cards. They can go in a couple of different ways. They can go past, present, future, mind, body, spirit. So our mind tends to stay in the past sometimes. It's hard to keep our mind in the present. Sometimes it time travels and goes forward, but a lot of times it, it sticks in the past. So maybe you're thinking and reflecting on yesterday's ceremony or reflecting on things that you've asked for. You've asked for a deeper sense of your intuitive knowledge to come forth. I also in this see a lot of yellow here, which is in your solar plexus, which is connected to confidence and releasing shame or guilt for having these intuitive vibrations, these intuitive messages. So we want to release any of that guilt. She's also wearing a cloak. She's got an amulet here of Ankh of eternal energy and she's got a little tiara. So she's ready for a ceremony too. She's here in the ceremony with us. This is a beautiful card. So the next card I have here is wisdom. What a powerful card. We have intuition and now we have wisdom. In this card we have a home space. So maybe some of you are leaving your home space or um, you're uplifting, you're uprooting, you're kind of detaching yourself from old patterns. Um, I'm feeling a lot of old patterns here. This like family um, connection. Maybe you were raised to think a certain way and this is like out of your normal comfort zone and you are gaining just a bigger eternal wisdom. Um, there's a book here which shows that reading and learning and taking in more knowledge is truly important to you at this time. So not just taking my word for it here, not just taking what I'm channeling here, but taking this knowledge and doing your own research on it on a deeper level. And then we also have animal energy here, some spirit animal energy or spiritual animal energy. It's hard because for me, I feel like I connect with so many animals on a spiritual level. Um, I know the term spirit animal is kind of um, being culturally appropriated in weird ways right now. So I do not mean to disrespect anybody of the indigenous heritage that may have spirit animals in that sense. I'm speaking of animals that have a spiritual connection to us in a different way. And I think that it's really important to acknowledge that people connect with energies in a different way and sometimes terminology gets mixed. So I'm not trying to walk on that practice at all, but I as a spiritual being have a deep connection to many different animals, both ones that I can see in the physical and in the ethereal realms. Like I have a spiritual phoenix. Um, I have a spirit lion sphinx energy that hangs out with me. Some people have spirit dragons. Um, I have cats that I hang out with. There's certain dogs. Um, I'm super connected to just feline energy in general. So like spiritual animal energy is really powerful. Um, I have people that are really close to wolves. I have some wolf energy, um, ele elephants, lions, so many different animal vibes. What's your favorite animal? What animal vibes with you and comes to you with messages? And again, here we have this sacral solar plexus energy lighting up the sky and it's more activated it's more dominant in this card so it shows that you're becoming more aware and more confident in your practice and that as you gain the wisdom and the understanding of how you can show up for yourself you can really activate your wisdom your soul wisdom your divine intention wisdom the wisdom that you were sent here divinely intended to use 
is being activated because we're calling upon it. I'm asking all of the energy that is, that is surrounding anyone that is tuned into this message right now to allow yourself, if you so wish, to be open to receiving messages of wisdom through your intuitive frequencies so that you may continue to expand and to step into your divine power. I want you to step into your divine power because you showed up for yourself tonight. And then these two came out together. So typically I only pull three cards. But these two came out together and they're both they're both these red outlines which are about movement in this deck. They're about action, taking action. So we have material harvest and positive movement forward. Look at that. And they both have this solar plexus like vibe going through them through the whole reading which shows that it is so important for you to feel into your confidence release any guilt or shame that you have in being the being that you are the spiritual divine light that you were here that you were meant to shine and show up as because activating that wisdom activating that divine intention and using the different tools that are calling to you maybe you're called to use cards now maybe you're called to get some special crystals maybe you just wanted a special candle i saw somebody's connecting with the sacred tool of money yeah call that in use that divine connection to embrace your divine intention like maybe you really do need that sacred money object so that you can give back to your community in a different way so many spiritual people are afraid of money and it's part of this material harvest here it's part of this ability to collect the abundance that you deserve so that you can give back to your community in a bigger, better way. There's no need to be afraid of money. There's no need to be afraid of having the things that you want and deserve because you are a divine being. You are meant to go through this material harvest and have this positive movement forward. Find your flow. Chase the light. Be in the flow of the action. You can see here there's also a little bird there's a little bird here and it's flying now I said I had another jumper which I think is great this card also came out and it kind of came out at the beginning so I wasn't sure where to place it but seeing that bird in this one makes me know that this one is important this is an important card it says choose wisely and to me this jumper says that it's important for us all to choose wisely how we choose to show up in the world are you ready to show up in your most divine form? Or do you choose to, to dim your light, to hide, to say, oh, I don't know if any of this will work for me. I'm glad it works for Shannon. I'm glad she can shine her light, but I don't think it'll work for me. That's your choice. That's your choice. Does this, this specific practice doesn't have to work for you. I'm not trying to force my practices on you. I'm inviting you to find what works for you. Maybe you're a different type of practice completely that's fine but it says choose wisely how do you want to show up in the world because again here's this light here's these birds spreading their wings and using your divine intuition your wisdom you'll get that positive movement forward and material harvest sorry my light is all up in this but i want you to see that flow that infinite flow we got the number eight in here so we have seven we have eight we have nine. The other ones, let's see, we have two and five. So we skipped a couple of numbers. But this shows that once you once you get through that and unlock that intuition and that wisdom, it puts you on this like fast track to going through the energetic system here. It's so powerful. I love using Oracle cards. They are just such a cool confirmation for me to experience when I'm giving messages. Um, I, I do readings at the end of Bring Me to Life podcasts. We do energy forecasts. And I am always super stoked when the cards I pull are right in alignment with the discussion we had throughout the evening. So if you want more personal, I mean, more collective card readings, check out the Bring Me to Life podcast, uh, bringmetolife.com. If you want a personal reading, hit me up. That's what I do in my soul sessions. I can use cards or I can use my intuition. My intuition is my favorite and most powerful tool because I have practiced with it. I have become more confident with it. Um, and a soul session is what your soul needs. And I, I do a deep dive in that. Sometimes we'll do a reading. Sometimes I will just meditate with you. We'll talk to spirits of energy that want to come through to you. Sometimes it's your higher self. Sometimes it's God, universe, spirit, whatever. Sometimes it's a loved one 
Sometimes it's a spirit guide, which we're going to talk about angels and spirit guides and all of that fun stuff tomorrow. Those are also amazing tools and part of my practice. Um, but we're starting to run low on time here, so let's keep going. Blah, blah, blah. All right, all right. You guys are blowing up the comments. I love it. Keep them coming. I love you guys. Y'all are great. All right, after I take a drink here. We're going to get into meditation now, I think. And after the meditation, we're going to do a little ceremony, a little activity to incorporate some fire and earth into our lives. For those of you that can't access fire and earth at this moment, you can stay in meditation and I will guide you through doing this practice in your mind. So, it's time to get comfortable, everybody. All right. Let's see. Got my candle, got my sage, I'm gonna get some music. I hope you guys are getting comfortable in your little sacred space. Actually, this isn't sage. I keep calling it sage, but it's mugwort. Mugwort is actually supposed to be really helpful with dreams, which I'm really excited about because I've had some crazy dreams lately. Um, another thing that's good for dreams is lavender and halite crystals, or stones, I guess they're more stones, so. All right, let me get some music. I'm going to be playing a song called Transitions that me and my partner CeeLo made for Shine Resonance. And I just want you guys to be comfy and begin to follow your breath. Grab one of your favorite objects that you have with you. If you don't have an object in the physical, you can begin to visualize it in some way. Right here, right now, we're just gonna take a moment. We're gonna breathe. We're gonna breathe. Connecting with all of these amazing things in our life, all our sacred tools, all our new friends that we're making through the ceremony. having a hard time following my breath, I like to take a breath in, count to four, one, two, three, four, hold that breath, count to four again, and then exhale as deeply as you can and follow that practice. Really feel into that breath. Feeling into that breath, connecting with the space around you. And if you have one of your sacred objects and you haven't already, pick it up in your hands. If you can, you can use a stone. You can lightly glaze at it for a moment. Because when we have sacred tools, sacred objects, it's important to infuse them with energy and intention, especially crystals. So we're going to fuse these sacred items, the sacred space. Maybe it's your journal, maybe it's a pen, maybe a crystal, whatever. We're going to infuse it with energy. As you gaze at it, you can begin to close your eyes again and try to recreate the details in your mind. And again, if you don't have a physical object that is here in this mental space, that I invite you to find a sacred object within your heart. As we take an adventure into our minds and beyond. And as we go beyond, we're going to visit our sacred temple. Our sacred temple. Breathe in as you begin to allow your spirit to leave your body for a moment here and ascend upward. Upward and upward. As it leads you to an entryway of your sacred temple. Allowing your temple to come into view. It may look many different ways. 
Maybe it's inside. Maybe it's outside. But whatever it looks like, it feels like home. It feels like home. Continue to let this sacred space come into focus. And as you do, you begin to see some sacred objects are already here. As you bring your new sacred object into this temple with you and you find a place to get cozy. And those that are still waiting to figure out what their sacred tool is, maybe explore your temple here for a moment. I'm going to give you a moment to explore this temple with your mind. Look around. What do you see? Is there an even better sacred object for you here? Or maybe there's something you would like to claim and bring into your practice. Visualize that now. For me and my sacred temple, there's an even bigger altar than I have in my physical world. It's adorned with crystals and magnificent candles and just so many beautiful shiny objects. There's artwork, there's music. The sacred temple is the perfect space for me and I hope yours is for you. I hope you find a special space in the sacred temple to just relax, knowing you can take this sacred temple with you anywhere. You can come there anytime, any place. You can go here. And those of you holding your physical objects, you can infuse them with so much love. I want you to tap into what these objects may mean to you and how can you use them on a deeper level. Maybe hold them to your heart and send energy out to the world around you. hold my objects to my heart. I like to take a nice deep breath in, out, connecting them with my frequency. And set an intention. My intention for my sacred item is to remind me of this initiation, this ceremony, this reminder that I am ready to claim who I am right here, right now, and I want to step into my most divine power with all of you. I invite you to do the same or to set whatever intention feels best for you. Mm. For those of you that wish to do an activity with me, you can do so in the physical. For those of you that feel you should stay in meditation right now, continue to do this in your mind. But I invite you to manifest a piece of paper, whether it's physical or more spiritual. I want it to be something that you can rip in half. Manifest your piece of paper. I want you to take your piece of paper and I want you to fold it or rip it in half. It's going to be separate at some point, so we might as well just rip it. Give yourself two pieces of paper. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
Let's get two pieces of paper. I want you to hold both pieces in your hand for a second, separate. And then I want you to take one of your pieces of paper. And again, you can do this in your mind. You can do this in the physical. And on one of the pieces of paper, first, I want you to write down some things that you want to manifest. Sometimes I'll just hold the paper and I'll think about that for a moment. What are some things that I want to manifest? These don't have to be just sacred tools. Maybe you have a sacred tool that you want to manifest. You can put that too. But for me, I feel like feelings are more beneficial. I like to call in more joy. I want to call in more strength. More stability. Maybe you need to call in good grades. Maybe you need to call in a new pet, some new friends, a new place to live. What do you need to manifest in your life right now? Write it down on a piece of paper, in your mind or in the physical. You're creating your manifest list. And most of all, I wanna feel more happiness, more unity, more community more peace take a moment figure out what it is you need what it is you are manifesting When you're ready, you can grab your second piece of paper, the other half. And on this piece, we're going to write down the things we wish to release. I wish to release fear, anxiety, stress. Any relationships that no longer serve me or anything holding me back. Any bonds or karma debt. all down and for me for those of you that are doing this in your mind that's okay I like to physically release or honor these practices this energy this this manifestation and this release so I like to take my manifests and I typically will bury them or place them in a crystal grid. I like to bury them because then it's like including the earth element and it's planting it like a seed. So I'm gonna take my little manifest list and I'm going to put it on a grid behind me while I grab another tool. Those of you that are meditating, visualize yourself planting your manifestations like seeds. Oop, let's go down. All right, all right. And then I like to safely take my fears, my frustrations, my releases, and I like to burn them or destroy them. If you don't have a way to burn it safely, make sure that you destroy it in a way that is safe for you. You can rip it up. You can do whatever feels good. I'm going to safely burn mine. I use this little space here, this little fire dish and I have a little stone that I collected in there and I have a an obsidian so it transmutes any of the negativity so this is a little practice that I've created I want you to do what feels right for you and again I have water here to put this out so this is me safely doing this I might take it outside to finish it but I'm just gonna kind of let it do its thing 
please only do things that feel safe for you. Again, like I have water right here so I can watch it. And I'm just releasing all of those fears, all of those anxieties, all those stresses and things that just no longer serve me. They're just burning away. They're being released. I'm so excited. Make sure you have a window open if possible. That way all the energy can just flow right out. So I'm going to take this outside afterwards and continue to finish that practice. So I'm going to set it aside right now safely. I made sure my fire's out so that I can finish being here, being present with all of you. So for those of you that are still meditating, take another deep breath. As you do this in your mind, and then feel free to join us back in the physical when you're ready. I'm gonna fade my music out here so that you guys can become more present right here, right now. And I would love for you to drop in the, the comments how you plan to honor your lists that you just made. What are your plans? Join me in the comments. Let me know. Are you going to bury it? Are you going to create a crystal grid for it? Are you going to keep it in your journal and date it? That's something I do too sometimes. What is your plan? I'd also love to know if you did that physically or mentally. Maybe you plan on doing it both ways. That's really good too. Sometimes I will meditate with both pieces for a few days and then do my practice with them so that I can really infuse them with the energy. But I wanted to be able to show you how I fulfill that practice. It's something that I do pretty frequently, actually. Um, definitely like to do it on the new and full moons when possible. And yeah, people are always like, how often do you do that? Anytime I feel like I need to. Um, there's some other little rituals and practices I have to help make your reality a better place and I will be sharing those in my five week journey because, you know, I could be here with you all night. I'm already over my typical hour, so um, yeah. In my five week course, I will be including more activities. There will be 33 journal prompts for you to reflect on because journaling has been a huge help for me. It, it helps me uncover things I didn't even know I was feeling. Um, speaking of, if you want a journal prompt for tonight, I want you to write about what a sacred object is for you, how you honor it, and was well, this practice helpful? Don't feel like writing about that? Write about your experience with your higher self yesterday, and if you missed it, go check out the replay. And yeah, maybe you are so stoked to learn more that you are so already ready to sign up for the five-week journey, where I'll be taking this discussion even further. If so, hit me up. Because in the five week journey, I plan to include a workbook, meditations, many meditations. This is that meditation, you'll have it to activate any of your sacred tools. Um, they'll be downloadable and things like that, so you can put them on your phone and do them whenever. I'm going to talk about that more later this week, but I will say for now that it's going to launch probably on November 2nd of 2020, so a little less than like two weeks from now. So I will have limited seats available for that in the first round and you can do it at your own pace. But again, the live community is where it's at. I love when you guys come here and join me. Look at this, you guys are joining me in the comments. You're creating community. Please make friends, introduce yourselves, find a way to, to be active here even if you're watching the replay. And just know that your practice can look so different than mine. It can look so different than mine. And that's okay. But I do hope that however you practice, that you do so in celebration. So for those of you that know me, you know I like to end and begin in a dance party. So let's celebrate another evening of magic together with some more gratitude as I check the comments. Are you feeling grateful? Are you feeling grateful? I hope so. I sure hope so. Let's do this. How you feeling? Leave me a comment. Let me know. Are you feeling your divine intentions being set? Do you feel like the most divine version of yourself is coming into action? I hope so. it up.
Raise that vibration. Bring in those manifestations. Release what no longer serves. Put some energy in it. Move your body. There's so many different things you can use as part of your practice, and I want to know all about it. Drop it in the comments. Send me a message. Let's connect. Let's be soul friends. Calling in my soul friends. comments coming in. I'm trying to read them all while I have a little dance off here. Drop your favorite dance gift. Let's see it. Mine's a little girl that goes like this because that's basically me as my younger self. Hope you're feeling grateful. I see people making new friends in the comments. That makes my heart so happy. We're gonna be doing this again tomorrow. So you can still invite another friend. We can continue the ceremony on and on. All right, all right. So that was amazing. Thank you all for being here and having this little dance party with me. I hope I gave you a smile, if nothing else. And I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow with your friends that you're going to invite. Please invite a friend. Invite a family member. Bring your kids. I try to be family friendly here, and hopefully I'm inspiring them too. And tomorrow we will be diving into angels, past lives, and deja vu, things people ask me about all the time. And we'll probably dive into some other things because I go off on tangents. But hey, if you have any other questions, drop them so I can try to cover them too. And if not here, then I'll cover them in an upcoming course or opportunity. And I highly encourage you all to journal about your experience tonight. And if you're catching the replays, please comment. Let me know you're there. Let me know that this is reaching the people it needs to reach. I do this for you. I can do these practices on my own. They've helped me so much that spirits like share this. Share this with the world. Build a community so that you can do this together and find your soul fam. So, Remember to safely put out your candles or anything that you had going on on your altar tonight. And if possible, keep your sacred space set up so you can continue to add to it and experience it. Not only for these next few days, but beyond. Create a sacred space so that every day is a sacred day for you. And if you're already stoked and you want more info on my five-week Light Up Your Life Soul Journey, then feel free to hit me up. Or if you want to work one-on-one, -on -one, you can share your story with me on a more personalized way. Get personalized guidance channeled through me from spirit to you. For a soul session, my soul sessions are starting to fill up and I will be doing a little less of them closer to the holidays and then I'll open back up at the beginning of the year. But that's what I'm here for is I'm here to help you channel and hold space for these messages. Not just heal you, but to facilitate the healing and to teach you the tools that you need. Like a divine antenna to your new radio that you're learning to tune yourself because I got you. I got you. I am excited. I'm excited to keep shining on with all of you and I will see you tomorrow. Stay awake, shine on always. Bye.